You know what's really tricky? Is handing off your designs to development teams, hoping that it's pixel perfect, hoping that you document it, inspect everything. You know what's equally difficult? Collaborating on teams with other designers and making sure that everyone has the right version of the file. Is it final or is it final final? Who knows? Who cares? But then you still have design systems to worry about processes and workflows, and you know what I don't need is another tool. What I really need is a platform, and that platform just might be Zeppelin. Zeppelin is an amazing all-in-one platform that allows me to solve all of the problems that I previously mentioned and a whole bunch more. It happens under one roof, it's seamless, it's easy, it's fun, and it's gonna absolutely blow your mind. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you around Zeppelin, get you up and running, and basically fix your design problems. All right, let's jump right in and take a look at Zeppelin. I'm at zeppelin.io. Um, that's where you can go to find out more about Zeppelin. Really, what does it do in a nutshell? Exactly what it says. It delivers on the promise of design. I don't even have to scan the page. Let me just tell you what it does. It allows you to collaborate with other designers. It allows you to actually hand off your designs seamlessly to your engineering teams. It allows you to have version control and plug into your workflows and create style guides and design systems. It does all of those things. And you can do that and find out more at zeppelin.io. Once you log in, it looks a little something like this and you can also also download the desktop version of Zeppelin, which I have running, and it's gonna look exactly the same. It's gonna be the same thing. Now, here's what you'll see is at the very top, I have a personal workspace and I've, I've created a company workspace, Showalter Design Company, okay? And inside of it, I have projects and style guides, okay? So I can click over and see a style guide I've created and I can see the projects that I'm actually, you know, utilizing. Now, the cool thing about Zeppelin is you can kind of set it up customize it how it works for you, your workflow, your company, uh, and your environment. So I'm able to create things called sections, and I do that by creating a section right there, or I can create a new project. But when I create these sections, we're able to move them around, right? And then when I create projects, I can dump them in the sections that represent a client, okay? So that's how I like to use it, clients, sections, projects like that. So inside of my Bitfold client, I have two projects. I have a marketing website and I have an iOS application. In my foodie section or client, I have the iOS app, the Android app, and maybe even a website. And so if I wanted to create another one here to put into uh, the Bitfold project, I could just create a new project, select. We don't have an Android project built yet, so let's go ahead and do that. And let's name this uh, Bitfold Android like that, boom, we're gonna save it, head back to projects, and then we'll just drag this project into Bitfold. And now we have everything housed under that client or under that section, looks really good, works really good, okay? Now from here, we can click on any individual project. So I can go into the iOS application. You can see all of the screens and there's a similar layout happening here as well. I can create sections and organize them or, or I can just dump them all in there and have every single screen. But I've created a section called onboarding, another one called dashboard, another one called trade. And so for me, these would represent my flows and I would upload my screens and then organize them into the specific flow. So that's pretty cool. Once we click into any particular screen, now we get what's called your spec mode, right? So no more redlining, bye-bye. I'm not spending my hours and time doing that. Don't need to use a plugin to redline. I can just head right here into specification mode, click on things, and I'm gonna get measurements. I'm gonna get details, values, margin, padding. And when I come over to the right-hand side, I get all the layer names that I've created inside of Figma. So this is my home card. It's it has a fixed width and height. I get all of that information as well as whether or not it's a component, colors that are being used, borders, shadows, and I even get my Swift code that my developers can come in here and just bink, copy the code right there and they have what they need. They can twist it around and do some preferences for their code, which is really cool. And then they can also explore extensions for that code. So if you want to plug into GitHub or Storybook or Jira to create tickets and cards and stuff like that, you can do all of that, which is absolutely amazing. Now from here, you can also do amazing things like create links for people. I can tag things and say, hey, this is currently uh, in production, okay? Or I could tag it as ready for production or shipped, so on and so forth. So I can tag everything to let people know what the status is of this screen. I can also hit right here on the bottom right hand corner and I can click and comment. Like maybe I say, uh, hate 
This, okay, great. Very positive feedback. I hate that. Great. Um, and we can have a little co conversation while we're collaborating with our design team, maybe our project managers and do all of that in here. We also can look back at other versions. So if I hit the little, uh, little hourglass over here on the, the bottom left-hand side of the screen, I get all of my pretty uh, previous versions with all of the commit messages because it's just like using GitHub for development. I have commit messages. So if I click back, I see version control, right? That was my initial commit. And then I did, I updated the headline size, came in, came in here and changed the marketing card to have this white background. Then I refined the card style a little bit and then I streamlined it one more time. And we have all of those versions, which is really, really cool to be able to go back and, and look at those previous versions. Now I know that this is the most current version of the design. There's no V2 final final. There's just, this is the final. And so from here, I have to ask myself, how do I get those commit messages? How do I get these designs? How do I get these projects going? Well, I established my projects inside of Zeppelin, but then I come over to my design software. Today, I'm using Figma. I'm gonna go over to my Bitfold app design, and you can see there is all of my screens, disheveled and thrown in here. Now, the reason I wanna use something like Zeppelin is because I don't I don't want my, des my development team, my engineering team, to have to come into Figma to try to figure it out. I wanna send them to an abstracted, kind of one source of truth area. That's where they go. They know that if it's in Zeppelin, it's done. It's ready for them to take a look at. That way they don't come into, into Figma or my design software and ask themselves, is this the actual correct version? Am I supposed to be working on this yet? Now I have to create all these systems and stuff inside of Figma and it, maybe it's not how I want my design document to look. Maybe I want my design document to be messy and be working on stuff. And then when I'm finally done, I shoot it out to something like Zeppelin. So that's the process. But once I'm here, I'm gonna grab all the artboards that I want to export. And you can see as I when I zoom in, it says, this is going to re-export to the Bitfold iOS app, right? If we select a little something, something there, we hit that little Bitfold app, it's going to take us to that project, which is great. But we also have that local version installed. So I'm going to go ahead and sync the selected artboards and look at that. We get the opportunity to add that commit message, right? Made uh, small changes, okay? And then I'm going to hit done. And when it's done uploading all of those screens, it's going to go ahead and plug them into the project over there in Zeppelin. Okay, so I can open up the web app. Okay, now we've re-uploaded our screens into Zeppelin. They are the most current. They're the ones we want our engineering team to be looking at. And we can go back and start working on a different project. So let's head back to our project section. Let's go to the marketing website. We're gonna hit that initial landing page. From here, our engineers can also download any assets that are needed. So if there's, you know, images or anything like that, they'll be able to download those items. They also get that CSS code or the HTML code that they can plug in right there. Super duper nice. Okay. Um, and from the right hand panel over here, when I have nothing clicked, I actually, I'm on the information tab right now. I can leave general notes or we could dig in and leave notes on a direct spot, but I can also jump over and I get all of the colors that are used inside of my project, as well as all of those assets. Right, so if there's any assets, any images, we can grab those there and I can see an on running view or running view of notes or conversations that are happening in here. So that's a pretty cool thing as well. All right, so Zeppelin is gonna go ahead and do the collaboration stuff and the handoff stuff. Well, what about building a design system or a style guide that developers can then plug into code? What about that? Can we do that? Absolutely, let's take a look. We're back inside of our project, our uh, Bitfold project. And you can see we have the iOS app open. We can jump over to style guide. And again, you can see all of the colors that are used, right? Uh, when we uploaded our screens, we also uploaded the native styles inside of our document. And we get all of those classes like brand blue and accent and black and gray. Uh, we can rename them here if we want. And we'll, if we rename them here, uh, it's gonna rename them in the code as well. But we also get uh, some of the text styling and we get uh, some of those components. Now, what's really cool is we click on those components and if we want to, all we have to do is ask our developers to kind of walk this through a little bit, but we just connect to code and you can connect to Storybook or GitHub or anything else like that. And then all of these uh, components are gonna be maintained in code. So the minute that you actually update them here, it's gonna update them in the code base of your project or of your you know uh, company which is amazing that's why you're going to want to have access 
to some development help so you can get things hooked up to the code base. Well, that's it. That's how you get up and running with Zeppelin to create a single source of truth, to collaborate and hand off like an absolute beast by using Zeppelin. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. I make lots of content about design and development and handoff techniques and cool platforms just like Zeppelin, so maybe stick around. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and check the description for links on how to access Zeppelin and try it out. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. I hope you're making amazing things. And I hope you're finding processes that absolutely rock and that help your teams thrive. I'll see you in the next one.